game player, I'm Kevin Montague, acting managing director for Opal Star Industries. I'm also the author and inventor of the award-winning Million Dollar Bank Game. Today I'm here to show you how easy it is to play the Million Dollar Bank Game. We're in the gaming parlor of my home. As you can see, I'm using the award-winning Lamarty trays for today's demonstration. Keep in mind that we don't sell the trays with each copy of the Million Dollar Bank game that you buy. Not yet, anyway. However, the trays are sold separately for the modest purchase price of what it might cost you to purchase your favorite board game. When some people first look at the Million Dollar Bank game, they mistakenly think it must be complicated to play. Others don't. In fact, the people who think it might be complicated to play are usually those who are scared to play money games to begin with and in fact are scared to handle money matters in real life. Well, whether the subject of money scares you or not, you're really going to enjoy this particular game once you see how easy it is to play. In fact, in our advertising on the box bottom, we tell you that no prior financial experience is necessary to play this game. Just set it up, roll the dice, and start playing. It really is that simple, and you are taught while you play. Let's start the demonstration by taking a look at the rule sheet. Keep in mind that the rules are the heart and soul of any game. You can see there is no booklet of rules to memorize. In fact, everything you need to know is on this simple 11 by 17 inch rule sheet. The game is simple enough for the whole family to enjoy. You'll further notice that the rule sheet is divided into two parts, setting up the game and the game board rules. Effectively, both sections of the rules could be printed on two separate 8.5 by 11 sheets of paper. But to simplify costs, we've combined them onto an 11 by 17 sheet instead. In fact, once you've read the setup part of the rules, you'll never really have to return to the setup instructions again unless you happen to forget which way your piggy bank game marker is supposed to be going. That leaves just the game board rules. You are not required to read the entire set of game board rules after setting up the game. Just start rolling the dice. As you land on a particular square, you then refer to the rules for that square and read them out loud to all other players. Within about 20 minutes, most players will know how the game works. Now before verbally explaining how to set up the game, keep in mind that this game is authentically based on the real world United States banking system. The subject matter has never before been captured in a board game format. Once you've played the game a few times, you're probably going to ask the question, why are the game board rules written the way they are? For that reason, we've created what we call the Industry Notes Booklet. You'll notice throughout the game board rules, a number of small footnotes appear. Such an example is shown here where it says CIN number two under the rule for passbook loans. If we look on page five of the industry notes booklet, we'll find the subsection called industry notes number two, just as it is abbreviated in the rule sheet. From here, you, the player, can read how the game board rules on passbook loans captures the real world use of passbook loans in the U.S. banking system as an example. The Industry Notes booklet is a great addition to the Million Dollar Bank game, helping to open and expand your understanding of the U.S. banking system without ever having to read or try to interpret bank brochures. It's a lot more fun, too. Now let's talk a little bit about setting up the board game. Most of you who have played board games before will have little trouble quickly figuring out where everything goes. For those of you who are new to playing board games or who simply prefer a verbal explanation, the following demonstration will show you how easy it is to set up the million dollar bank game. Upon removing the shrink wrapping from around your copy of the Million Dollar Bank game and opening the game box, you'll discover inside that our research and development has reduced the American banking system to its basic components, as represented by the playing pieces. 
Each game comes complete with a game board, the rules sheet, the industry notes booklet, a bundle of play money, seven different denominations, a complete stack of new account passbook cards and loan document cards, five types each, three stacks of playing cards, including four home cards, a score pad underneath, two dice, and four piggy bank playing markers. Each player should pick the colored marker of their choice and locate it on the start square on the game board. You might even place the two playing dice on the game board so you'll know where they are when you're ready to begin playing. The three stacks of playing cards, both for life fortune, the errors or favors, and the career moves should be shuffled and placed on the game board in the spaces designated on the game board that give access to these cards for all game players. When landing on a life fortune or errors or favors square on the game board, simply draw a card from the top of the deck, do what it says, then return the card to the bottom of the deck. Exception is found with the career moves cards, which I'll discuss in just a moment. Next, unbundle the play money, the new accounts passbooks, and the loan documents. If you're playing with four people, you might designate one person as the vault keeper to take care of the play money and another person to be the document keeper to take care of the passbooks and the loan documents. Each player starts the game with a $50,000 regular new account passbook and $50,000 in liquid cash. Each player receives the following breakdown of cash. Three $10,000 bills, three $5,000 bills, three $1,000 bills, two $500 bills, seven $100 bills, and six $50 bills. In short, each player starts with $100,000 total. Make sure each player receives a score sheet. Each player will need a pencil or a pen to write with, which is not supplied with each game. Each player then draws a Career Moves card from the Career Moves deck of cards and keeps it. You'll notice on the game board that there are four monthly salary squares located at the four corners of the game board. Every time you land or pass on this square, you receive the salary shown on your current Career Moves card. Whenever you land directly on a career move square on the game board, you must surrender your current career moves card in favor of a new card from the top of the deck. You may go up in salary or down in salary. Let's establish the direction of the game board. On the rule sheet, we've supplied two simple drawings that quickly and clearly dictate the directional flow of the game board. When looking at the actual game board, you might think of the dollar sign image as two game boards overlaid on top of each other. The first board works using the premise of three concentric circles overlaid on top of each other. If we follow my pointer, we can see this would be the first circle, then the second circle, and finally, the third circle bringing us back to the start square. The bi-directional arrows make it possible for game markers to travel in either direction upon landing on or passing a bi-directional arrow. The red S-shaped lone row area is only accessible through the enter lone row square. You cannot enter this area of the game board any other way. Players travel the S-shaped lone row area all the way through, 
unless they land on one of the two lone denied squares. Upon landing on a lone denied square, you must advance your marker to the loan payment due square. From here, you resume the normal directional travel of the game board. Well, you know how to set up the playing pieces and you know the directional flow of the game board. But we've forgotten one other thing. The object of the game. The object of the game is to become a million dollar depositor with the bank. The first player to acquire one million dollars in new account passbooks while having repaid all their loans wins the game. How you get to the goal is dependent upon your knowledge of the system. Naturally, you won't pick up on all the strategy moves available to you in playing your first game. But as you catch on to the fun and excitement of your first game, we know you'll want to play again and again. One of the most rewarding things I witnessed about the product was that nobody was ever satisfied playing just one game. That's quite a testimony of accomplishment and the sign of a winning formula from any point of view. One last thing about setting up the million dollar bank game. Roll the dice and designate who rolls first. Highest roll moves first and the second player is the player to the immediate left of the highest roller and so on. Now let's talk about the game board rules. The heart and soul of a bank thrives on just three things. Money, new account passbooks, and loans. It's no different with the million dollar bank game. The names of the playing cards and the denominations of play money capture the current day real world system at a glance. For instance, did you know that the U.S. Treasury Department prints denominations of money greater than a hundred dollar bill? Just open your encyclopedia under money and you'll more than likely find the denomination breakdown of U.S. currency as I did. The next available denominations of money printed by the United States Treasury over the $100 bill are the $500 bill, the $1,000 bill, the $5,000 bill, the $10,000 bill, and the $100,000 bill. These denominations have been accurately portrayed in the million dollar bank game. Next, the five major types of passbooks in the real world are the regular passbook, the money market passbook, the 30 month passbook, the T-bill passbook, and the jumbo passbook. The five types of major loans in the real world are the personal loan, the swing loan, the interest only loan, the second trust deed, and the home loan. And speaking of loans, did you know that for every passbook you hold with a bank, it is possible to use your passbook account to convince a bank to give you a loan? These type of loans are called passbook loans. These have been captured too in the million dollar bank game, which can be clearly seen when you turn over each of the five new account passbook cards appearing in the game. Passbook loans can be acquired at any time by you, the game player, even right from the beginning of the game. With all of this said, I will now put the entire flow together for you. The three main colors on the game board to be mindful of are blue, green, and red. Any square showing a blue new account square will be your main objective, but not your only objective. Since the game is staged as a race, i.e. the first player to become a million dollar depositor, you'll need to keep an open mind on the loans, not just the blue new account passbooks if you are to master the game. The object of the game is to become a million dollar depositor with the bank. So while cash is important, it is not your main objective. 
The most interesting playing piece in the million dollar bank game and the only piece with the most amount of options for you to choose from are the blue new account passbooks. When landing on a blue new account passbook square, you have one of three choices. One, do nothing and let the next player move. Two, secure only one blue new account passbook indicated by the square at that time. Or three, cash in the same new account passbook you may be holding for liquid cash. Why do you have the option of surrendering a new account passbook for liquid cash? Let's go back and look at the five new account passbooks being held by our document keeper. Notice that each passbook pays interest in a combination of three ways. Both the regular and money market passbooks pay interest only on a quarterly basis, every three months. The 30-month and T-bill have the option of paying either monthly, quarterly, or maturity. The jumbo pays only monthly or maturity. Does it seem a little confusing? Well, it's not. In the real world, the regular and money market passbooks are termed as liquid cash accounts. This means that you can withdraw your money at any time and the bank won't penalize you a nasty fee. Since the old days of banking, liquid cash accounts have always paid on a quarterly basis and no one has ever chosen to violate that old tradition even until today. The 30-month and T-bill accounts in the industry are called timed certificate accounts. This means that you've agreed with the bank to leave your money with the bank for a set period of time. Should you choose to break that agreement by withdrawing your money before the agreed time period has expired, you've agreed, whether you know it or not, to pay the bank a fee for the inconvenience you've caused the bank. Bank depositors, such as yourself, are free to have your interest paid either on a monthly or quarterly basis or at the time the account matures. In other words, when the agreed time period has expired. The jumbo accounts only pay monthly and at maturity, however. Again, tradition has always dictated that these accounts pay this way. You can quickly see why the goal of the game is to become a million dollar depositor with the bank. But don't kid yourself, the bank is making money too as you grow richer. Okay, you're now aware of the three payment schedules a bank uses to pay out interest. But how is that captured in the game? We can see at the center of the game board that there are two quarterly interest squares. These are approachable either independently via the legs of the dollar sign image of the game board or together via the lone row pathway. Every time you land on or pass a quarterly interest square, you collect the quarterly interest shown on all your new account passbooks. Good heavens, you cry. You mean I'll have to add up all the interest figures shown on all my new account passbooks every time I pass a quarterly interest square? Only if you're not using the handy score sheets we've provided you in each game. Notice that the score sheet serves two purposes. It helps you keep a running total of all new account passbooks you own, so you'll know at any moment how close you are to the million dollar goal. It also shows you at a glance what your running total of quarterly interest earnings are each time you pass or land on a quarterly interest square. This allows you to quickly tell the vault keeper how much money you're owed by the bank each time you land on or pass a quarterly interest square. Well, that answers the question concerning quarterly interest. Now, what about monthly and maturity interest? Throughout the game board, you'll notice green squares labeled interest for a particular passbook. Here, we see a square which reads interest, $90,000 T-bill. 
check to see if you own a T-bill passbook. We'll assume you do. Notice on your passbook that it pays a monthly interest dividend of $1,300 and a maturity interest dividend of $8,000. How do you determine which of the two interest payments is paying during your turn, you may ask? To understand the answer, take the following into consideration. In the real world, most people make arrangements with a bank to have their interest paid using a schedule of payment that is convenient for them, which a bank does its best to accommodate. Some people require a monthly check from the bank. These may be retired people needing a monthly paycheck. The very rich may desire to collect all their interest at once to avoid paying taxes along the way while having time to reinvest their money as an added tax shelter. Whatever the reason, the reasons are as different as the people attached to them. Also, the payment schedule may be changed from monthly to maturity by the depositor at any time and vice versa. Since most people make their arrangements based on what they know of the market at the time, and since the market is always unpredictable, it was clear to see that a gambling option is present at this decision-making stage. So, how do you determine which of the two interest payments is paying during your turn? Pick up a single die and roll it. If it comes up a one, two, or a three, your passbook is paying monthly. If it comes up a four, five, or six, it is paying at maturity. Let's say you roll a six on the die. This means your T-bill account is paying at maturity. So, you receive $8,000. But if you own, say, three T-bills, you receive three times $8,000. In short, $24,000. It should be obvious by this example that as you collect new account passbooks, your interest earning ability grows, thus speeding up the cash flow of the game and making it easier for you to secure more new account passbooks as the game progresses. Okay, we've talked about money and we've talked about new account passbooks. Now let's talk about loans. Any of the playing cards might send you to the enter loan row square. Or you might just land directly on the enter loan row square forcing you down the loan area of the game board. Why the name loan row? Well, it doesn't imply skid row if you properly respect the principle behind acquiring a loan. In the old days, loans were not as diversified as they are today. Today, loans are as prolific as a grocery produce section. It was this image that inspired the name. Most players think the loan row pathway should be avoided. This comes from prudent parents telling them not to borrow unless they absolutely have to, or from having read the Shakespearean play where the lines read, never a borrower or a lender be. The truth of the matter in today's world is this. If you are going to survive and have the things you want, you are going to have to borrow. It isn't the borrowing of money that creates problems. It's the right use of it by the borrower that makes all the difference in the world in handling a loan. In the million dollar bank game, there are five types of loans. The personal, swing, and interest only loans all work the same way. Upon landing on a loan row square, offering one of these three loans, the game player may one, do nothing and let the next player roll the dice, or two, take the cash equivalent of the loan offered and its subsequent loan document. You can use the cash for any need that may arise during the game. Just remember that you must now pay off this additional loan document before declaring yourself the winner. Every time you pass or land on the loan payment due square, you must make the loan payment called for on all your loan documents. This is a good place to refocus on the blue new account passbook loans. 
In the real world, a depositor can borrow usually up to 90% the amount of money being held in their new account passbook. To put it another way, the bank will lend you their money against what you have in your new account passbook and they'll lend you up to 90% of the total money you are keeping in that passbook. So if you have a 30-month passbook with $80,000 in it, the bank will lend you up to $72,000 of the $80,000 you are keeping in your passbook. The bank is assured repayment of the loan since your own money in the new account passbook is being used to guarantee repayment. You are allowed only the maximum passbook loan amount during a game session in order to expedite the play of the game. The second trust deed and home loan work differently, however. Upon landing on a home loan square, you don't receive cash when taking on the loan. Instead, you get to pick one of the home cards, along with the home loan document. You may sell the home card to any player for a profit, or to the mysterious private buyer who appears from time to time out of the Life Fortune card deck. In the real world, you cannot secure a second trust deed unless you first acquire a first trust deed. The home loan in the game qualifies as a first trust deed. Once you have a home loan card, you may opt for a second trust deed card. If this happens, you take a second trust deed card along with $50,000 cash and add it to your collection. Just remember to pay off your loan before declaring yourself the winner. This pretty well finishes my... Revenge.